Hi, thoughts on the Confederate flag. I do not see a problem with people whose family members died fighting for that flag to be able to wave it high. It is historical. And the idea that your son or daughter went and marched in a war, and people are just so stupid, they think they were fighting for slavery. Those people who fought were piss poor. They never had a slave a single day in their life. They fought for the South and their sons signed up, went to war, and now they're told that even having the flag or having any any pride for their dead relatives is something that is wrong and dirty and backwards and racist and associated with slavery. People are so ignorant about slavery and the numbers on slavery. I mean, the idea that everyone had slaves in the South is so stupid. It was the incredibly uber wealthy. People, people believing that everyone today had a yacht. I mean, it, it's just so, I can't, I'm just gonna stop ranting about it. The answer is people should be allowed to keep their Confederate flags and wave them because it represents an element of history. Right wing does this all the time, and I want to give you guys a heads up about it so you can start seeing it for yourself. They set up straw man arguments. She's like, ah, it's so stupid to say that everyone, every white person in the South owned a slave. Whoever said that? I don't know anybody who's ever said every white person in the South owned a slave. You just made that up so you can say that it was stupid. And then what it does is it tricks right wingers into thinking, ah, oh, yeah, you see that? The left wing's wrong about this whole issue. Well, first of all, we weren't wrong about anything. She made up a strong man argument that no one ever says. And secondly, that has nothing to do with the rest of what actually happened. And so, and even if what she said was true, and by the way, I uh, I didn't know, I thought it was a smaller number, to be honest with you. Those numbers that Michael just read us are amazing. 49% of white people in Mississippi owned slaves or their families did. Wow, that is a much higher percentage than I thought. Right, um, and, the, and the thought that the other 51% of Mississippians were just somehow opposed to slavery, you know, oh, it's, that's just for those 49. These are people who were fighting for a way of life. It was how they made their money. It was how they kept their prices down. It was how they rented their land. It was how they raised their horses. Everything having to do with agrarian life in Mississippi was based on slavery. And that is why they fought the Civil War. And so, come on, that that you think that it was, you know, only a certain percentage owned slaves. All of them fought for the idea of having slaves. And as Jamel Bowie said there, they also fought for the aspirational part of owning slaves. Come on, so 100 years after slavery, the black community was doing better. We were going up, up, up. Then suddenly they socialized our community via welfare policies and the black community started going down, down, down. And you're sitting here no. supporting a candidate that is advocating for making that on a larger scale. He's saying, we're not just gonna do it to the black community, we're gonna do it to every community in America. Well, you know his policies do not work. You know that socialism has led to more deaths than anything else in the last 100 years. So the talking point, I know. So the talking point that Candace Owens has been pushing, she's no longer with Turning Point USA. But when she was at Turning Point USA, she was paid to say that it is not systemic racism that leads to, you know, the disparity in wealth and income between, you know, white individuals and black individuals in America. It's because of socialist policies. It's because of welfare that the black community is being held down. Now, first of all, that makes no sense. We know, and we're gonna we're gonna debunk that in just a second. But think about who funds Turning Point USA. They're the very corporate donors that corrupt our politicians to, to push for deregulation, to pu- push for tax cuts. So look, they're very savvy. It is a multi-pronged approach. It doesn't just stop at corrupting politicians. They attempt to corrupt education. They attempt to uh, you know corrupt young minds, which is what's happening with Turning Point USA. And it's terrible and it's disgusting. Bloomberg is done only because he decided to run as a Democrat. And unfortunately, um, the one thing that you are not allowed to do is talk about the truth if you are deciding to run as a Democrat. So it's the same exact thing that he was basically saying that we saw Barack Obama say in 2008 about father absence and how it harms black Americans and Latino Americans because they don't grow up with the father in the home. But because Bloomberg Bloomberg said this under the under the Democrat Party. He's done. The good racist, the best racist on the left, by the way, is Bernie Sanders because he pretends to be their friend. He lies to Black America's face when he knows he is going to be the one, like Lyndon Baines Johnson. He's Lyndon Baines Johnson 2.0, who is going to enact enact policies that are going to harm Black America for the next 100 years. But he smiles in their face and he takes the bait. Laura, Laura, I mean, did did he she talk about Lyndon Baines Johnson and, and 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 the Civil Rights Act, voting rights? Okay. She, she lost me.
<laughs> what well, was I don't that? understand what any of that meant. Yeah, it was just nonsense, okay? So she actually uh, took to Twitter and tried to elaborate, I guess, mm -hmm. and she said, Lyndon B. Johnson, while in Congress for 20 years, voted against every single civil rights bill put before him. He only signed the Civil Rights Act because he was forced to as president. He was a racist, hence, and then she, uh, she, Attributes a quote to him which that, people do, which people but it's do. not actually necessarily something that he said. Although right. he probably was there's no evidence to indicate that he actually said that, um, and I don't want to repeat it. But nonetheless, uh, just to give you a little bit of a history lesson, uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 ended segregation in public places and banned employment discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. First proposed by President John F. Kennedy, it was signed into law by Kennedy's successor, Lyndon B. Johnson. So, uh, so Bernie's gonna pass bills that are harmful to black Americans for 100 years, like the Civil Rights Act? I don't understand what. I would be embarrassed if I made a point like that anywhere, like mm -hmm. on television. And it's it's amazing that, that, but that's what they look for. It's like, okay, let's let's keep inviting these people on who know nothing about history mm -hmm. and who spin things in such a weird perverse way 